This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company located in Perrysburg, Ohio. Fair Trade certified USD organic and integrity is their core value. Coffees come in K cup, gift cards are available, and free shipping over $50. Be sure to check out all of the great flavors that Jared will mention in the middle of the episode over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. Hey, Jared. Hey, Kyle. I nailed that. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, Kyle? That was it, it, I, I'm not going to give you an S tier on it, but I will give you an A tier on it. All right, all right, man. Nomad, that's a backhanded compliment. <laughs> all right, um, a lot of a lot of excitement in uh, professional football <laughs> right as we're recording this here. But we're going to be talking about Buckeye basketball, though. Yeah, so let's get started. Let's get started. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right here, Jared. How are you doing this fine Sunday as we're recording? Uh, you know, uh, I'm, we're talking to our chat, our Discord chat, who, who if, you, if you guys are watching YouTube, you can, you can see them um, below us down here somewhere. Um, I think they've been drinking. I think there's a lot of Cincinnati Bengal-based excitement happening in the discord i feel like there's a decent cincinnati bengal contingent in our discord and i feel like there's been some alcohol-based celebration happening in our discord server and uh i i feel like i feel like it's going to be a little bit uh rowdy down in the live chat yes <laughs> But we're going to be talking about the Buckeyes basketball here. We got we got a pair of games we're going to talk about here. So let's let's waste no more time than jumping into the Ohio State Minnesota game that happened on the twenty seventh, which feels like a long time ago. It does feel uh, like a was, long time ago. Yeah, that was last Thursday. Uh, Buckeyes pull out a win, seventy five sixty four over in Minnesota, and. Still an issue with the Buckeyes. It, a win. Buckeyes got a win here. Happy. Always happy getting a road win in the Big Ten. Minnesota not okay. not not one of the vaunted Big Ten basketball teams this year, though. Yeah. Uh, um, two and six in conference. You know, eleven and six overall. So I mean they're they're not not bad. But like there are some really good Big Ten teams, as there almost always are. Uh, this this isn't this isn't one of them. Uh, they they do win this game by eleven points. Um, I don't know if I ever felt great watching this game. Um, Ohio State absolutely did a, a an amazing job on the boards this game, which I think helped to uh, cover up a lot of mistakes, helped cover up a lot of deficiencies. They're still not shooting the ball well. Uh, in a game in which you win by 11 points, you only shoot 45%. Uh, the three-pointers are basically 25%. Um, they did good on their free throws, but, you know, from the court, they, they just played terribly shooting the ball. It's a terrible shooting game, uh, you know, luckily or not luckily, uh, I don't want to say luckily, but they, they say they saved themselves from themselves by rebounding the ball incredibly well this game. Yeah, 48 to 22 on that rebounds. Uh, I think the game felt really close because Ohio State just didn't get to the free throw line. They, they tend to, it seems like to get on to the free throw throw line about 15 20 times at least this game they only got to the free throw nine times so it was up to them to shoot uh shoot on the court well and 
as you as Jared said, 25% from the three point line. And that's just not going to cut it. And we're going <laughs> to we're going to um, cover that in the next game here. But yeah, it's they, they, they definitely picked up on some of the um, issues that they've had early on six turnovers in this game a lot better than what we've seen in December and early January. Right. But the issue is now the three point lo- is shooting behind the arc and still trying to find that, that second person who's right. there to back up EJ Liddell. Now in this game, uh, Ka- like Ka- I, I Kyle, know Young I... ha- Kyle Young had 14 points here and uh, Zed Key had 12, but it's not, it's not that consistent 12, 16 points a game that we need a second second player to be. I'm sorry, you broke up there for a second. Did you say a second score? Yeah, a second score there. Yeah. Yeah. Um the yeah, I I I think I said on a previous Sloop Hoops episode that essentially like we need someone else who's gonna score twenty or almost twenty. Right? And I don't care who that is. Like you need EJ Liddell to score 20 or about 20. Um, and then you need someone else to score about 20. However, I think I'll take three players over 10, like three players over 10 is pretty good. Uh, Zed key played well. Um, I mean, 12 points, but also he got to, you know, eight rebounds. EJ Liddell killed the boards this game with 15 rebounds. Um, but you, you also get a good scoring day from Malachi Brenham, uh, scoring 11. And as Kyle Young said, 14 points, or as my Kyle said, Kyle Young got 14 points. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's it's a good game from a bunch of standpoints. Um, you know, it's as Kyle said, it's a Big Ten road win. Those are not always easy to come by. Uh, but it's just a, another rough shooting game. Absolutely rough shooting game. Uh, Arns continues to struggle. He only gets three points being on the court for 15 minutes. Um, you don't you don't get any significant points here um, out of out of Michi Johnson Jr., uh, who I think is someone who we want to start seeing some points out of. We are starting to see more Cedric Russell. Uh, he had uh, eight points in this game. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the Purdue game after the after the ad break but you'll have you'll have um sorry totally blanked on what i was saying russell uh, also plays well against purdue um i don't know it's it's one of those situations for me where they need to get it all going at the same time like i feel like ohio state starts to figure out one thing in, in this game you know the killing it on the rebounds they are killing it with their ball handling and their lack of turnover um but just not shooting well at all just not shooting well at all a terrible shooting day yep 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 Um, nomad says i'd rather have two more at 12 than one at 20 well okay i mean I so I mean like math wise sure because that's twenty four to twenty right, um, but but even I, I assume you mean even if it's one person at yeah yeah I understand what you mean um, I I I one hundred percent get what you're saying but I really want there to be on this team a dedicated scoring threat who is can consistently score the ball whose name isn't EJ Liddell. And I, I think that we're starting to see again, not, not to get too far ahead of ourselves because Kyle Young also has a good game against, uh, against Purdue. We're starting to see Kyle Young get back into the form that we expect Kyle Young to be in. Um, we're starting to see, Scoring contributions from Cedric Young and Eugene Brown. Um, Zed Key had a good game against Minnesota. Does not necessarily all sorts of foul troubles uh, in the next game, but I don't know. It's it's what I'm just trying to see out of. Uh, Young needs ten and ten. So does Key. 
I mean, yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. Um, yeah, I don't disagree with you. Uh, Kyle, well, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. You talk. What, what I what I would really like to see from what I've seen the past five games here, obviously Liddell is going to get the bulk of the shots, but but uh, Branham though, I think Branham's really come along yeah. in the past uh, six games here. The past six games, he's averaged uh, thirteen points over thirteen points a game. I think he could be that person that can get you, even if he gets around 15 a game. I think I think that's going to really help Ohio State really open up EJ Liddell because everybody's like pretty much double covering him because who's going to be shooting the the three pointers? It's it's not it's not um, uh, Justin Arns. He's he hasn't shot over 25 percent since the beginning of January here. It's if um if um Branham can get you that fifteen or or more points a game, I would say it's going to be in a lot better shape. Yeah, um, Kyle, uh, Buckeye Esquire down in the chat says Meech plus Suing plus EJ plus Zed plus Kyle Young. Uh, he thinks that's the optimum lineup. Um, he he says it's sort of like Branham Suing can be interchangeable down the line. Um. I don't know, Kyle, what, what do you think the ideal lineup is in your mind? Like, you you get to pick the lineup for a day. Uh, who who's who's your team? Or yeah, so like yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's right, your so, team? So so my team right now, I'd put as your as your starters right now. I put Liddell, E, uh, Meech. I mean, th- th- um, those are those are the those are the top three, obviously. But I mean, the next ones. I, I find it weird. I, that... I, I really like what I'm seeing out of Branham recently. I, I really, I really do. But See, to me, Branham's, uh, I, I think, outside of EJ Liddell, obviously, EJ, uh, everyone's putting EJ Liddell in the starting lineup. That's that goes without saying. Outside of that, I think the most obvious answer is Brenham. I think the most obvious answer, like if 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 you're doing a fantasy draft, if we're doing a Scarlet and Gray team here, to me, <laughs> no Stuart, not Brunk, to me, like Brenham's your second is is the first team second, the second team's first pick. Um, I, I think, I don't know, like, call, call me crazy if you want to here, Kyle. Um, mm-hmm. Three forwards. That's not the crazy yep. part. That's understood. EJ Liddell, Zed Key, Kyle Young. Okay. Is that a crazy choice? Because that, that feels like three big forwards. You know what I mean? Like you typically will have like yeah, two so, big forwards yeah, I, 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 and then your smaller forward, you know, a la Justin Orns or, you know, any number of other players. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, I'll go with EJ, Zed, Young, and then I part it probably put in Branham and Michi. I think that I think that would be my five. I I agree. I, I think that's my five as well. I, I, I like suing. But he he's got to get back into the um, he he's just got to get back, <laughs> and then uh, and then uh, Towns would be an amazing. Um, Town, Towns and Suing will I'll believe they're back when they're actually on the field, and I'm just not. Yeah. Court, excuse me. That, um, <laughs> I I, I'm just not counting on them being back at this point, because mm-hmm. I feel like, even in the past before these injuries, they were out with other injuries, um. I don't know. I, I kind of don't want to like you put suing on the court. Who are you taking off the court? Um, I kind of want to leave the young guys in there. Honestly, like I, I kind of want, I, I kind of want more young talent on the floor. Um, mm-hmm. If anything, Kyle, I think I'm tempted almost to take Zed key off depending upon the game, depending upon who you're matched up against and go with like a three guard lineup. 
and try and depends get on, Brown depends out. On, yeah. yeah, it depends on who yeah, you're depends playing. On who you're playing. But if you're playing against who we're talking about next year, Purdue, absolutely not. <laughs> but neither minute, of us mentioned minute, Wheeler. Are we wrong? Should it potentially be Brenham and Wheeler? I mean, they're the team's struggling defensively. Should we not be taking Wheeler off the court? Yeah. Wheeler instead of Michi? Or Wheeler? I mean, you could do, you could go three guard, take Young or Zed Key off the court. I don't know. Who, who is your five, I think, is an interesting question. Uh, Gangland says, when Key gets tired, you bump Young to the five. Yeah, uh, I think so as well. Yeah, or, or foul trouble. Uh, v- very, very true. Um, neither of us, Kyle, mentioned uh, Justin Arns. Uh, neither of us mentioned Joey Brunk. Uh, neither of us mentioned Sotos. Um, I, in passing mentioned Brown and Russell. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, I do think, uh, our, our maybe is, we, our maybe is... we are, and maybe we aren't Stuart, but at least we know which you're to use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Arns. I mean, I understand Arns can be an amazing shooter, but he hasn't, he hasn't scored more than that. He hasn't scored in double digits, Jared. Since December eighth, against against Towson, say that date again. December eighth. Yeah, um, I think he's only scored double digits twice this year, maybe three times. Three times. One of which was against a good opponent. The other two were not, if memory mm-hmm. serves. I don't have. Those I mean, he's numbers in front he's of me. The, the past. Oh no! I'm just going to read off just a few games here, um, starting with the moving ahead to the Purdue game. I, I don't. Do, do, do we want to do we want to bash Arns for like a fourth straight s- slew poops? Um, <laughs> when your three point specialist can't shoot, yeah, is what it is. I mean, I, I, yeah, is what it is. Yeah, Kyle, we need to do an ad break, I think, and then we'll come back. We'll talk about the Purdue game. Sure thing. All right, um, Iron Bean Coffee Company. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, what, what should I talk about today, Kyle? Flavor coffee, dark roast, medium roast. Um, well, let's let's do light roast because my um because my coffee is about out, Jared. So I'm about to order some more from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. So tell me some light roast. Well, uh, they don't have a ton of light roast. Uh, the lightest roast you're going to get is the Loki, uh, which is an Ethiopian coffee. <coughs> uh, it's one of the most uh, renowned coffees in the world, the specific type of Ethiopian bean, that is. Uh, it's wet process, uh, wet process blend, and uh, it's higher in caffeine, lower in acidity, rich tasting, filled with fragrance, uh, has citrus and floral notes in it. Um The uh, Loki is a light roast coffee made with 100% Arabica beans to give you the edge and the confidence to slay your day. Um, That's that's going to that's their lightest coffee. Um, If you're looking for something a little on the easier drink, Kyle, uh, a little on the easy drink side, then maybe check out some of the flavored coffees might be an option. Um, You could, for example, go with the cinnamon roll. A little bit of cinnamon and cream to a little bit of cinnamon and flav- cream flavor to to get you going. Um, let's see. Combines smooth coffee flavor with a perfect balance of uh, cinnamon roll uh, handcrafted uh, with 100% single origin Brazilian Arabica beans. Um, medium roast coffee. Uh, the entire it'll uh, waking up the entire house on a Sunday morning. Uh, let's see. If not the cinnamon roll, Kyle, how would you feel about a salted caramel mocha? Hmm? Salted caramel mocha? Yeah, I, I enjoy good salted caramel. Tell me a little bit about that one. 
Indulgently flavored brew combines a smooth coffee flavor with a perfect balance of sea salt, caramel, and chocolate. Handcrafted with 100% single origin Brazilian Arabica beans. Um, the salted caramel mocha is a sensory overload. It's a medium roast coffee with a velvet kiss for all of the senses. Come on now. Tell me that doesn't sound good. So if uh, any of those sounded good to you, uh, uh, that's weird. You know, no, no, it's fine. Uh, the Yeah, if any of that sounds good to you, you can head on over to ironbeancoffee.com to check out those coffees. Uh, I scratched the surface. There are so many more coffees you can choose from. Uh, some of the other flavored ones are vanilla hazelnut, the butter pecan, uh, peanut butter chocolate buckeye, bananas foster, uh, white chocolate peppermint, chocolate peppermint, the Dylan's grog, the intense blueberry. The mom's carrot cake is sold out, uh, but there's still a lot of other flavored coffees to choose from over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Will do, Buckeye Esquire. Uh, Kyle, Ohio State uh, leaves Minnesota, then travels over to Purdue. This is not a fun arena to play at. No, a- absolutely not. Not not when you go to West Lafayette. <clears throat> not a not a fun uh, place to play in. At fifteen thousand strong, and they made their presence presence felt here. And there was, oh boy, there was there was definitely times here that Purdue was just going to run away with it. There was I, I got to look at the exact stats. At one point, yeah, they were up by 20 points at one point in the second half. And it was like, oh, yeah. I think it maxed at get... 18. Am I wrong? No, it was it was 20 points. Okay. It was 20 points there. But, yeah, there was there was a point there. It was like, oh, yeah, there's no way Ohio State's getting back in here. But slowly but surely, under that 10-minute uh, mark, Ohio State slowly was starting to come back. And, and then towards, I think it was about three minutes Two minutes left. Ohio State made it a uh, single-digit um, game, and then even just tied it with about thirty seconds left. And the, unfor- the unfortunate um, three-pointer that Purdue made with yeah. under a second left. That, that's nothing you could do about that. That was just a great shot. It was a yeah. good defense, just a better shot. Yeah, this is Kyle. Correct me if I'm wrong. Kyle Young's best game of the year. Um, he had an excellent basketball game. Uh, I don't know. I don't think the 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 stat line shows it. In fact, uh, taking a quick look at his stat line, it doesn't. Uh, but I thought he did incredibly well defensively in a game in which he was uh, completely outmatched, especially from a height standpoint. Um, yeah, the defense really... Uh, struggled in this game. Uh, Purdue are incredibly talented. They have great finishers, uh, great I mean, just playmakers. Uh, I mean, look, look at a look lot at the of free talent throw to line. overcome here. Yeah, just look at the free throw line, and that that tells yeah. you right there. They almost doubled the amount of times that they went to the free throw line than Ohio State, and that and that's just Purdue. Purdue's always been that kind of team to just try to overpower you in the paint, and. Yeah, that's just that's just how they are. Twenty two fouls to twelve fouls. Yeah, and uh, you know I don't think it was it wasn't like refereeing or anything. That's that's just Purdue's game, and they they played it. Um, Kyle, is it weird to say? I, I almost feel better about this basketball team after the loss to Purdue than I did after the win to Minnesota. Yeah, I, it's, just, a little, it's a yeah, lot a of respect bit. for this team to come down from eighteen or twenty points or whatever it was. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it was they were down by twenty. It was, I think it was about ten minutes left, somewhere around there. And them to come back against a really good Purdue, like one of the best teams in the country, to come back at their place. Yeah, very. Uh, I was very happy to see that. Definitely disappointed they didn't pull out the win to make, to complete that comeback. But I like to see them really digging deep to slowly come back and put yourself in a position to win. Yeah. I, I, I kind of agree there with you, Jared. Uh, it was, they were down, 
uh, 32 to 52 with 1439 left is, okay. is, is what you were looking for. I think there, um, and they were down, um, 49, 63. So 14 points with seven minutes left down by 14 with seven minutes left, uh, seven. Yeah. Down 14 points with seven minutes left and forced Purdue to hit a, a buzzer to avoid overtime. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I don't know, it's, I really loved what Ohio State was able to do in this game as far as just not quitting. It would have been real easy to quit in that environment, in front of those fans, against this team that I think from a pure talent standpoint outmatched Ohio State. From a size standpoint, from a finishing standpoint, um, I think outclassed Ohio State in many, many ways. And they didn't quit. And like, it's like, oh, hey, they, you know, they showed a lot of toughness and they didn't quit. And like, all these things are really easy to say and almost feel trite and almost feel um, cliche. But seriously, though, but seriously, though, like they were down by 20 points with, what was it, 15 minutes left? They were down by 14 points with seven minutes left. To come back and tie it at the very last second, at the very last second, Ohio State ties the game. Now, unfortunately, it wasn't the very last second. <laughs> unfortunately, it wasn't the very last second because yeah, there was three seconds. I think it was like three or four seconds left on the clock and Purdue hits a buzzer beater and, and avoids overtime. Yeah. Branham in this game... Tied EJ with the most points, 20 points in this game. Shot very, very well from the from the floor. Seven for 10, two for three from behind the three-point line. Just a, this is the kind of game <clears throat> that I like to see from Branham here. He's He has a great future with Ohio State in the coming years. Gangland just said in the chat that he's going to be unstoppable next year. It feels that way. It really does feel that way. Mm-hmm. It's just a local kid from from Columbus. Kyle, um, I don't know, I don't know if you know this. But did you know he goes to the same high school as LeBron James? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gangland says, and then he won't be back after that. No, probably not. I think it's probably two and done. I think it's probably two and done. Uh, yep. Yeah. For Malachi, the yeah, it, you know, I always said, I've always said, I've been saying it, and of course, we had that conversation earlier about you know what's better, you know, having up twenty player and then you know three or four or well three like ten point players or you know in this case you had two players, only two players in double digit scoring for Ohio State, mm -hmm. and they both yep. scored twenty points. Um, Zed Key was in foul trouble the entire game. Um, he was having to go up against um, <laughs> uh, Zach Eady, who is just a monster at 6'4", 300 pounds. Or excuse me, 7'4", 300 pounds. I didn't even want to say 7'4". My mouth wouldn't let me say it. 7'4", 300 pounds. Uh, yeah, just got in foul trouble trying to guard that guy. And it just, it wasn't, it wasn't working. It was not a good Zed key day for, for that reason. Mostly he only played for 12 minutes. Um, and, and Kyle, I feel like this to, is, this is our that's best. That's why we got Joey, to see a lot of Joey Brunk. Yeah. That's why we yeah, got to see a lot of Joey, Joey Brunk. Brunk game. I almost wanted to, and I don't think I've ever said this before. I wanted to see more Joey Brunk this game. Like, I feel like defensively he was probably having the most success against Edie. Um, and I think this is why you brought Joey Brunk in, right? I feel like if any game, if there is a game on the schedule that you brought Joey Brunk into play to be a center, to be a defensive presence down in the paint, it's this game, right? Like this is the game. I almost wanted to see more of him. Um, you know, I, I thought he was doing, I thought he was hand handling himself really well. Only you know, shoots twice, but scores both times. 
you know, that being said, Kyle Young got a lot of minutes and I thought, you know, obviously was playing uh, considering the height difference, considering the amount of height that the Kyle Young was giving up. I thought he played excellently against Edie. Um, Kyle in this game, and it probably is worth mentioning just because of the conversations you have, you and I have had during these sloop hoops episodes. Um, First game, and I don't know how long that the uh, Arns comes off the bench, does not get the start in this game. Now, the question might be, is that a permanent switch or is that a, hey, let's get the bigger forwards in there because we're playing Purdue? Um, so, yes, you know, it's not. I'm sorry. Are, are you denying me the the possibility that maybe Arns just isn't starting anymore? Are you taking that from me? I will see. I will see what happens in um, well, maybe not the next game because Ohio State plays Iowa coming up next. Maybe maybe against the Maryland game or the Maryland Kyle? team. Kyle, he is a three. He's a he's a three point specialist who can't hit a three pointer to save his life. Mm-hmm. He had three points in this game. He took four yep. chances from behind the arc and hit one of them. Yep. Kyle, at this point, both EJ Liddell and Kyle Young are better three point. He's he's the third best three point shooting forward on the team right now. Mm-hmm. Why is he why why is he on the court? Why why would he start? Let alone even be on the court at this point. That's oh, like he's having actually the, he's actually like the ha- fourth. He's actually no, he's actually the fifth best. Three pointer, I I just said forward. Oh, for- he's the third best okay. forward. <laughs> um, Kyle, yeah, you ever seen a heist movie like an Ocean's Eleven or something like that, like a heist movie? You know, we like there's that montage where you're like putting together the team, right? You're putting together the team. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you like you need a tech guy, right? And then you need a driver. And then you need like you have, you have to go and you have to get like an explosion specialist and, and you have to go and get all of these specialists together. Justin Arns is the guy you like. We need a three point shooter. All right, let's go get Justin Arns. It's like going and getting a driving expert. This is our getaway driver. He is the. And then like the dude doesn't have any hands. It's like going and getting a tech expert just to find out that he's blind now and can't even see a computer screen. Like if the expert, if the specialized expert can't do his job, why is he on the team? We'll see in the coming games here. See if, if Holtman does pull the trigger or not. So we will wait and see. I'm just saying, you and I right, put Jared. together our starting fives, and neither of us included them. That's all I'm saying. Yep. All right, Jared, that is both games this last week for Ohio State. Coming up, Ohio State does play uh, Iowa this Thursday at 8 o'clock, and they will also be home next Sunday against Maryland at 1 o'clock. All right. I'm sorry. I spilled a drink while you were talking. If there is a good job, little, there's if there's a little bit of panic in my eyes as Kyle was talking, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> I did I did my best not to not to show it and then just decided to tell everyone because that's how I do things. Um yeah. So all the things Kyle just said. Uh do you have any I think is it time to end the show? All yeah, right. Let's go ahead and end this show, Jared. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to stop by our t-shirt stores. I'm wearing my uh, redesigned Canton Bulldogs shirt that you can buy at 7071, all the numerals, 7071.thesloopcast.com. Uh, That's where we have a bunch of like alternative merch that you can go and pick up. They're, it's merch that... Uh, supports the show, but isn't like, you know, podcast merch. 
So, you know, if you're not someone that's going to wear a bunch of podcast merch around, you can go buy something from the 7071 store and uh, support us that way. Uh, or if you do want podcast merch, we have a bunch of Ohio State themed stuff. If you do want some podcast merch, then you can head on over to merch.thesloopcast.com. So that's 7071.thesloopcast.com or merch.thesloopcast.com. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, I don't want to spend too much time in it, but how about the hometown hero of Joey Burrow? Pulling yes, off yes. the win against pulling off the win against the Chiefs. Going is that Cincinnati also a hometown going... hero nomad? <laughs> Cincinnati yeah, heading uh, back to yeah, Cincinnati heading back to the Super Bowl since nineteen first time since nineteen eighty eight, I believe. I uh, I mean I know it's their first even this year was their first playoff win since the eighties, or maybe it was like 90 yep. or 91. Yeah. It's, um, I, they won four games last year and two games the year before that. Um, it's, it's a hell of a rise from Cincinnati. Um, and I, and I not a Cincinnati fan, uh, not a Cincinnati fan, but I was still absolutely pulling for Cincinnati in this game. I did not expect them to, to win this game. I was like, okay, this was fun, but you know, now it's the Chiefs' turn. But they no. were a they were a seven and a half point favorite, Jared. <laughs> uh, in, in, a, in a play in a playoff game, in a playoff game, they were a seven and a half point favorite. Kansas City was. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's. It'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, Kyle and I don't know who the other Super Bowl opponent is quite yet, so uh, you'll have to give us some leeway on that one. But yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. And not just because of Dr. Dre now. I think that was the only reason I was going to watch before. But I think <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will. By the way, not not just Joey Burrow. Like yeah. Cincinnati won that game down the stretch because of their defense. Thanks in large part, in large part to Sam Hubbard. Hubbard had uh, an absolutely amazing finish to that game. Uh, then mm-hmm. let's not, you know. Eli Apple Va- made uh, some some good plays down the down towards the end, and then he, he could he could have had that. Yeah, he could have had that interception to end the game too. Right, and then was it the very next play or was it two very plays next, later? Yeah, yep. Very Va- next play was Von, Von Bell. Bell does get the interception. Um, you know, so those three um, Isaiah Prince is also on the offensive line. I don't care what LSU fans have to say about it. I still claim Joey Burrow. Um, As an Ohio State alumni. Damn right he is. He graduated from this from this university, damn it. So, yeah, it's um, I'm excited for the Bengals, and I'm excited for all the Ohio State players on the Bengals, and I'll be cheering for them. Yeah, and a, and a big difference with the, uh, the offensive line, only – only allowing one sack compared to the previous game where he got sacked like nine times. So right. much, improved, it, much, much, much improved, but man, you get Joe Burrow, a better offensive line. Which will be the yeah. focus. I'm sure yes. this off season. Well, Kyle, so much for not ta- spending much time on yeah. it. All right. All right. That's it, Jared. Let's go ahead and end the episode. <laughs> uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by, um, a band from, uh, let's see, who, 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 who am I doing? I don't know who I'm doing yet. A band um, from Cincinnati, maybe? I, uh, man, I was just about to say, a, I was about to say a band, and then you said that, and I'm like, no, Kyle's right. I should definitely pick a band from Cincinnati. Um, <laughs> let's do a band from Cincinnati. They are called Motherfolk. Um, no, Nomad. Ohio State would, would, would rip us a new one if we did that. Uh, this band is from Cincinnati. They are called Motherfolk. Uh, we'll be playing a song by them. So if you're listening to the audio version, if you're listening to the podcast version of this podcast, just stay tuned. Do nothing. Just keep listening. Um, no, not Marshall Falk. Mother Falk. Uh, so you got uh, the audio people might already be hearing it. Huh. And the YouTube people, there'll be a link down in the description. Uh, you can click on that link down in the description, and that's how you can hear it because YouTube doesn't let us play music. So, Kyle, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to 
drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Motherfolk. <laughs>